Hey everybody, I'm Chris White with the American Battlefield Trust and I'm standing in Guilford Courthouse National Military Park and I'm actually standing near the Hoskins Farm. The Hoskins Farm would have been owned in 1781 by Joseph and Hannah Hoskins and it's a prominent feature here on the Guilford Courthouse Battlefield. And I'm pleased today to uh, introduce Jim Kirkpatrick who is the former president of the Guilford Battleground Company. Uh, the Guilford Battleground Company actually outdates the American Battlefield Trust in fact, there were two different Guilford Battleground companies, one founded in 1877 by a man named Judge David Schenck. He's also known as Major Schenck because he served in the Confederate Army. And he is really the catalyst for what becomes Guilford Courthouse National Military Park, his uh, battleground company. Jim is going to pick up that mantle in the early 1980s, around 1983, uh, because this piece of ground known as the Hoskins Farm becomes uh, up for sale and it's a piece of history that needs to be preserved. So Jim, uh, before we start about the preservation side of things, why is the Hoskins Farm important on March 15th, 1781? If you had been standing, Chris, right where we are today and you walked out that front door and if you'd looked off to your left down towards that busy intersection now uh, where all the cars are, uh, you would have seen 2,000 of the finest troops in the British Army coming up that hill with glory on their mind. If you look to your right up the hill, about 300 yards, you would have seen a split rail fence with about uh, 1,000 to 2,000 militia immediately behind it. And uh, that was the first line of mostly North Carolina militia. And in between, right where you're standing today, that battle took place. And that battle, they didn't know it at that time, but two and a half hours later, when it ended up near the courthouse, about a mile, mile and a half that away, that battle was the Battle of North Carolina during the Revolutionary War. And it decided once and for all that this state was going to be free of British rule. Yeah, the Battle of Guilford Courthouse, uh, March 15, 1781, is the largest battle in the Southern theater of the American Civil War, save the siege at Charleston, South oh, Carolina. Okay. Did you say Civil War? I'm sorry, the, Amer the American Revolution. Uh, sorry, we're so many battles we're going through and so many wars on this trip. We've been the War of Regulation, the Civil War, war uh, the Revolutionary War. We just need War of 1812. Um, so this is going to be a, a very key battle in the American Revolution. It's what we call a Pyrrhic victory for the, the British. Even though they win this battle, they're forced to go out to the east to Wilmington, and which will eventually take them up to Yorktown. And that's the army under General uh, Charles the Lord Cornwallis. So. Uh, Jim, as we're standing out here today, the Hoskins Farm, this would have been in the middle of those two armies. So it would have seen the, the Patriot forces firing from one side. It would have seen the British firing from another side. There were about five open fields here at the time. It's about a 150 acre plantation, as Cornwallis calls it. You know, uh, why, why do they come here? Why do the two armies come here? And what happens to the Hoskins afterwards? You know, it's, it's fascinating about the revolutionary period inside of North Carolina. Uh, we wonder how they could find each other in an area this big. Well, there weren't that many roads, and it happens to be that New Garden Road was one of the most widely traveled roads between here and Salisbury, which was about the only major village uh, in the Piedmont section of North Carolina. So the road was here, and the year, earlier General Green, as he withdrew through this area running from Cornwallis during the retreat to the Dan, he liked this area. He came by and he saw this would make a good defensive position if he ever got back down here. And it was a natural place to call in militia because they could all be, everybody knew where Guilford Courthouse was. And so those things came together and this happened to be just the place where they came together. Uh, on the morning of the battle, Cornwallis was getting camped 12 miles from here, uh, down near Deep River Friends Meeting. And his troops got up early in the morning and marched all night long and ran into the first American, the cavalry, American cavalry at New Garden, which is now, we call it uh, Guilford College and the New Garden Road down there. So there was initial scrimmage first thing in the morning down there and there were already lots of casualties. Now the time he got here, both armies were revved up for the real thing. And that's what took place where we're standing. As a matter of fact, the British formed around the house and moved across that field uh, to attack that first line. And the terrific fire from the American militia, uh, huge numbers of casualties were sustained right out there uh, across that field and around this house. The house became a hospital after the battle, which is natural because there weren't that many houses around here. Uh, and it was raining that night and you want to get as many of you wounded in as you could. Supposedly, there's a large gravesite somewhere on the, uh, the property. 
We were not able to find it using Wake Forest University archaeologists, but we did find another thing, a number of things that verified that the battle did, did take place here, which we knew already. Uh, so this stretch of land was very, very costly for the British. And by that evening when the battle was over and both sides were adding up their pluses and minuses from the battle, Cornwallis suddenly figured out that a quarter of his army was dead or wounded on the field. And a lot of those wounded would die in the weeks following. Uh, when Cornwallis pulled out two or three days later and headed toward Wilmington and resupply, all he left behind were his wounded and a good case of smallpox, which spread among the local population. So this was a very pivotal and very costly day uh, for the British and America. And you would have seen coming over top of this land, the 71st Highlanders, Fraser's Highlanders, known as the 2nd Battalion, would go forward, and they're going to attack the American line that is held largely by North Carolinians. You would have seen Light Horse Harry Lee near here. You would have seen William Washington, the cousin of, of uh, George Washington, to the north of us. Bannister Tarleton's men are up here. So there's a lot of major names that would have either been near or on the Hoskins farm that morning. Charles O'Hara, who's in charge of the guards here for Char Charles Cornwallis's army. So. A lot of people come here, battle takes place, British victory. Let's fast forward, Greensboro as we know it in 1781 was not the Greensboro we know today. It will grow due to textiles after the war, tobacco, railroads come here. And then eventually, as Jim and we were talking about before this, this uh, video, this was all open farm fields, this was country. Now today, we have battleground, one of the major roads that runs past here. Um, so the city of Greensboro moved into this direction. So what role did the Guilford Battleground Company, the renewed Battleground Company, have in helping to preserve this site when it came up for sale in 1983? Yeah, this has stayed in one family's possession for a long time. Uh, and that was, of course, is the Hoskins family. And then actually one of the people that lived in it about the time of the 1950s, when I remember as a child, uh, was Burke Davis, the author of Civil War and Revolutionary War material. And I read all his books at an early age, like a lot of us history nuts did. Uh, but then after that, uh, it became quite clear with the development, you can see the apartments across the street, the condominium right up the road, and a huge shopping center down here, that this property was gonna be developed commercially if something wasn't done. And then the people came up, uh, the folks that lived here finally, and they had preserved the land well. They'd done their best to keep it going. Uh, but they had to cash out. Uh, it was that, that was their opinion. So they put it up for rezoning. Well, there is a, we were in the county at that time, not in the city of Greensboro, and the county commissioners turned down the zoning by one vote, one vote. And I'd been a history nut forever. I graduated with a degree in history from Wake Forest. Uh, and I just love the stories of American history because I find them so inspiring. And I knew a bunch of other nuts like me. And we came together and said, maybe we can do something to preserve this house and this property. And to make a long story short, we founded the new Guilford Battleground Company. We just took the name of the old one, uh, which had disappeared back in 1917 after they finished their job of opening up most of the National Military Park. And we started raising money. And we came up with a unique public-private partnership between the county, the city, some local corporations, and individuals. Uh, and we raised about $750,000, $800,000 which seemed like an awful lot of money at the time, to purchase the land, restore the house to a farm site, turn it into a municipal park under the Parks and Recreation of the city of Greensboro, and eventually to build a museum on the back portion of the property dedicated to life in the Piedmont uh, during this period. I've always been fascinated with people who came down the Great Wagon Road and settled the Piedmont, which is where most of them came from, and the travails and the things they put up with and just surviving at that time was very, very difficult. But they saw it through and everything we have today, of course, is built on what they built for us. Yeah, and, and it's amazing you bring that up, Jim, that you know you have Quakers living down the road at New Garden. Um, you have Moravians living out in Salem and some of the other communities. You have Scotch-Irish and Scots coming over here. So it's, it's a real melting pot Absolutely. here. And everyone's moving in from the coast, obviously, or coming down, as you said, the Great Wagon Road. Now, the, the New Garden Road, which is still a major road here in, in Greensboro, was also known as the Great Salisbury Wagon Road. So this was a, a wide enough road to pass probably two wagons at the time. So this was an impressive, impressive road. So, you know, a lot of people don't understand how the American Battlefield Trust works. Um, you know, we go out, we preserve land. We, we raise money from, from donors saying we hope that you don't donate to us. But we also work with 
matching grants uh, from the state the state level as well as the federal level, sometimes the county level. And Jim, that's something that you all were doing. You were explaining your, your process of preserving this land out here. Um, and it's kind of what we do at the American Battlefield Trust. It was fascinating what we do today. And we were joking, you know, they predate us, well predate the American Battlefield Trust. So, you know, you uh, eventually purchased the land, the property. What did it look like when you purchased everything out here? What, what did you have to do to bring this land back? And what was the evolution of that? Absolutely, it's very interesting. Uh, if you went in the Hoskins house at that time, uh, you found that the Hoskins house was uh, enclosed with a brick facade around what you're seeing out here. There was a carport over here that was connected to the house. There was a kitchen, a real kitchen, immediately behind the house, a den immediately behind the house, several uh, bedrooms off in that direction. And then you had two other buildings. Uh, if you uh, look over the far side near the parking lot, there was a single building which we later turned into a kind of a quick visitor center. And up on the top of the ridge right here, there was another house that had to be demolished uh, when we moved in. So we had to secure the property and we went in and we demolished the building. We had to restore the Hoskins house, which was quite an undertaking in itself. We did do some archeological work and discovered some things. In fact, right there at the corner of the Hoskins house, this corner right here, was discovered something called a musket tool. If anybody's been in the military, there's a special tool that you use if you've got a rifle that you can break your weapon down very easily. It's all military. It was in the British Army, and there's very few of them around. But we found one right there. So that just once again verified that, yeah, this was the place, all right. Yeah. Uh, so we got it stabilized. We turned it into a uh, municipal park. Uh, we did bring in the Coble Barn down here, which is that is not historically authentic to the period maybe to the period but not to this this site uh, and we built the forge the garden and some other things to turn it into a home site it was never our intention to replicate the telling of the story of the battle with what they're doing at the national park we viewed ourselves as partners in trying to accomplish that um, then eventually in the middle of the last decade it became quite obvious to us that the city's priorities were moving other other places with the dollars, and that's how priorities are established. And we approached the National Park and said, would you consider taking it this place in to the National Park? It should be, because it's part of the National Historic Footprint, always has been. And we had a very enlightened uh, director at that time who worked with us and got it through Atlanta and Harpers Ferry and got it approved and it happened. And we, our belief was, well, we're in good shape now because the government owns us and they never run out of money because they got the printing press. And that was a year before the great government shut down and that caused financial burden. So we were not able to open the visitor center as much as we wanted to while we were under federal stewardship. And then of course later we had some terrible damage during one of the major ice storms in, in Greensboro several years ago. And the, it was decided that the visitor center that we had constructed could not be fixed for less than than we had or had any chance of raising. So that center was removed. Uh, but our goal now is, uh, is to buy all the land we can between here and the National Military Park, which is about a tenth of a mile up the road, and eventually turn that back into uh, farmland that looks like it would have on March 15, 1781. So you'll be able to walk from the Hoskins house, just like the troops did on one part of it, straight up to the first line and then on through the National Park. Uh, we think that would be make it even more accommodating for people who want to come here and get a, a real taste for what it was to be here on that fateful day. Yeah, absolutely. And the American Battlefield Trust has worked here at Guilford Courthouse. You can go over to our site, battlefields.org, check out some of our maps by Steve Stanley. And you can see we've we've started purchasing some land here, which is difficult because this is a active city. There are people who live here, so we're only able to buy small plots of, of homes but we've been starting to work down here at Guilford Courthouse over the last five years. Um, you know, so I think the, the one obvious question that I haven't asked, is this the original house? Uh, we, we have the, these other buildings we've talked about, so the house itself, is it original? We believe it is. Uh, there was some work done by, uh, where they use the tree rings, you know, they go into, it's got a name I can't pronounce, to try to date uh, the home. Dendochronology. That's the word, dendrochronology is a word that I'm searching for. Uh, but they use trees from another site that's not can, anywhere near this site. And we think, and they showed a little bit later uh, uh, construction date, the 
the local speaking history, another word I'm searching for. Here, oral history. Oral history of the site through the family and through everybody that lives around here it says that this is a house. And the fact of the artifacts we found around it seem to indicate, yep, that this is the place. Uh, we have not found the dead red coats yet, but back in those days, conditions very primitive. It was a very quick burial, uh, and they said that for several months, in fact, even a year or two afterwards, uh, the wolves would come out and be uh, removing the dead, the remains of the dead, uh, because they were buried in very shallow graves. So I'm not sure we'll ever find anything like that. Uh, but once again, it was a very bloody day. This was a hospital. Uh, I'm sure the British troops perished in that hospital, and they're buried somewhere around here. Uh, so. Yeah, and, and at least 93 British uh, officers and men are killed in the battle. They lose actually 28% of their army. 1,900 men come down the New Garden Road, and, and the British lose about 28% uh, of their army. It's uh, going to be a large portion to lose here um, at Guilford Courthouse. So, Jim, you know, the Hoskins, they moved down here from Philadelphia or from the Philadelphia area right. to avoid battle because they, they moved here because the the Brandywine campaign, the Philadelphia campaign of 1777. They come here in 78. Uh, and, and pay about 200 pounds, I believe, for, for the land down here. And unfortunately, the war comes to their, their front, front yard. I always think of Ken Burns with uh, thinking of, about uh, the Appomattox, uh, when, when we start talking about the, uh, what happens there. So uh, to wrap up, tell us a little bit about the Modern Battleground Company. I know you have a new book. Um, where's that available? And can folks join your organization as members or make donations to help preserve uh, what you're all doing down here? Right. You can go on the website, obviously, uh, GilbertBattleGroundCompany.com, and uh, books are available for sale, or will be once we get the center completely opened again, because uh, we just printed this book uh, in the in that site, and you can purchase them on the website as well. We'll be able to within the next month. This is fairly new for us because we just did this and we're just coming out of this pandemic. Uh, but the way we view this thing, there are two big stories here. And the biggest story, of course, is what happened on March 15, 1781. Uh, some of those people that stood behind that split rail fence up there and faced the, the strongest army in the history uh, of the British Empire, they were kids. I mean, 15 and 16 year olds with a musket to almost knock them down. Uh, and there were brave men on the other side, too. But this was a fateful day and a big day in the history of North Carolina because as we say, the road to Yorktown began at Guilford Courthouse. And you could say right here at the Hoskins house if you want to go that far. Uh, so that's one the big story and we never want to get away from that. The other story is about the same things that the American Battlefield Trust is doing today. The groups of volunteers, private individuals, some governments, some foundations coming together to raise money to preserve uh, a site that cannot be, I mean, you cannot lose these sites. This is part of the national fabric. This is what we are and what we're all about. And it's a story that unites us, by the way, in a time when we need a lot of uniting. Because I don't not, I don't care what your ancestry is, uh, if you're an American today, uh, no matter where you came from or whatever, the story of Guilford Courthouse, the story of the American Revolution, that's your story. Because those rights, those fundamental rights that we enjoy today are the rights that were paid for in blood back here. So uh, as we say in our the book that we put out, volunteers can start it and make it happen very quickly. Uh, there are some rules we put in that book, which we think would encourage people to do it the right way. We learned because we did everything the wrong way. None of us knew what we were doing when we were raising money to do this, which I understand is pretty much par for the road for a lot of historical organizations. But there are just certain practices that if you do follow them, as we say it in our book, uh, will help you get there. Uh, but one thing we say without a doubt, never forget the main story, the main thing is what happened here on March 15, 1781. And anything you do should be to enhance that story, not to degrade it. Jim, I, I think that, that says it all there. So I want to thank you for taking the time to come out here. I also want to thank you for helping to be one of the catalysts to preserve this, this piece of ground. We really appreciate you being part of this. Um, we've given some presents earlier. We've exchanged some gifts and some pleasantries out, out in the parking lot. So if you want to come down here to the Hostings Farm, feel free to visit uh, Guilford Courthouse National Military Park. You can come down here. You can walk around, see what it looks like. Hopefully by the time you get here, uh, it will be open back up for a more in-person visitation as well as ranger and historian tours. But uh, otherwise, we thank you for watching today. We thank you for supporting the American Battlefield Trust. Check out the Guilford Battleground Company, their website, and their new book. And thank you for supporting Battlefield Preservation. Thank you. <laughs>